Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below, and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice. Okay, one of our first shows of 2022. We've got a special treat tonight. Ohio had a historic day. We have Dominic DeSabato, the best-looking DeSabato, I might add. Dominic, first things first, congratulations. Uh, Historic day, the OHSAA finally sanctioned girls wrestling as a sport in the state of Ohio in 2022. Congratulations. This is something that you were big on. Um, you coordinate. What is your title with the state of Ohio right now and, and getting girls wrestling to get sanctioned in the state of Ohio? So I'm the coordinator of girls state wrestling tournament and director, okay. or whatever you want to call it. Um, you're the guy. Um, yeah. Well, not you're one, of, you're people, one of the guys. There's a lot of people that, that you know, that are part of it um, from our association. And um, it just happens that I was the president when we first had our first meeting and and then since I wasn't coaching, it was perfect for me to just kind of run with it because I didn't, I had extra time and then we could use our school. So the timing for me was perfect and it, it fit out great because the coach associates had to take it. And, you know, you can't, you can't run something like that if you're the head coach, you know, so i had already stepped down as my role as a head coach. So it, it was just great timing for us and, and for the girls. And, and, you know, today's a great day. I mean, congratulations. That's awesome. Ah, uh, are you the youngest to Sabato? What is the pecking order as far as the Sabados go? So I'm the youngest age, boy. Age. Youngest, youngest boy. Vince is the oldest. And then Leo. Then we have a sister, Trish. And then Luke. And then another sister, Ange. And then Mike. Then Adam. Then myself. And then I have a younger sister, Molly. Is, okay. I, I lost count. There's only nine. nine. There's only nine. <laughs> There's only nine. Is that it? <laughs> That's it. And um, your dad passed away in 2001, I want to say. Yes. And then well, your mom, when did your mom pass? Um, she's guys, hers was seven, eight years ago. Eight years ago. Okay. So uh, you guys, the Sabato family was the champ. You guys had the most state titles in Ohio and the Jordans recently overtook you, correct? Dude, I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I think there's something still for like brothers. But yeah. I, you know, we don't pay attention to that stuff. Right. You know, I love I mean, offers are right there. We, uh, you, we just not like we go look and compare. We're, we have respect for everybody and we're just proud of what we've done, but we're also proud of all the other families, you know? I love it. Offers are sitting at eight. What are the, what do the DeSavados have actually? You've got your three time state champ, weren't you? Yeah. So we have 11 with the brother. 11. Holy smokes. Right? So, so you, as four. far as brothers go, I think you've got, a, you've got everybody beat. I think that that, yeah, you got the Milkovich's beat because they could only compete three years. Yeah, I think the brothers, that's it. But then, like, Dernlins are right there, I think. And um, Yeah, Dernlins are way up there. And then, um, well, then you I got Jordan, but you only got a couple of them. So they're, they're, that's not too shabby either, right? No, that's not bad, man. That's Six awesome. So we're, you know, we're proud of it. It's something. It's not easy, right, guys? <laughs> it's not easy. Hey, I was at youth practice tonight, Dom. And – uh it is something else to watch the little guys roll. I got two boys. I have uh, Ferdinand is five. Thomas is four. And it is, it's like a barrel of monkeys and they're herding kittens the whole time. And they love it though. They got a big smile on their face. Tommy got uh, Ronnie Dubell's son, <laughs> Roman, need him in the face tonight. And he cried for about a minute. We got him back out there. He had fun, uh, but it had, making it fun, right? Like it's really hard to make sport of wrestling fun. Would you agree with that? Yeah, there's not much fun about it other than get your hand raised. You know, it's like that's what I always tell when I coach. I say, guys, this is not it's not fun. But, you know, how you make it fun is work hard and get your hand raised, you know, and um, you try to make it fun. But 
I'm a little old school when we had practice and coach Horn would try to let him play soccer or something before practice. And I just, I'd walk out of the room, go downstairs and say, hey. I just get worried guys would get hurt, man. You know, yeah. like that happened one year we were doing like dodgeball and Kirk now, you all know Kirk and mm -hmm. dude goes down with a, with a meniscus. And from that point on, I'm like, we're not doing this anymore, man. I'm like this that, guy's a top kid in the country, you know, that happened to us at Kent, well, after Zeb and I were done, uh, Jay McGee, old teammate yeah. ours walk on qualifies for the NCAA tournament. They're playing mat ball or something. Correct me if I'm wrong, Zeb, but I think he like fractured his orbital. Yeah, he broke his orbital socket and couldn't wrestle in the, the week NCAA. NCAA. Here you on a here he was a walk on and a fifth year guy. Awesome guy. Nobody doesn't love the guy type type personality, you know, because of Matt Ball, you know. So no, yeah, you're right. Jay McGee, orbital socket fracture, no NCAA tournament. And he was and he came out of nowhere and he was he was just a he played college football for a year. He college football for a year and then came back to Kent. He's a um yeah, and he's from Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga Falls. Falls. Yeah. I mean, it just makes you sick to think about it. How much did Nail miss, Dom? So that year, we he actually, like, maybe a match or two. Like, he fought through it all the way, and then um, it, it got stuck. Dude, we, I, like, I figured we figured out how to, like, Robo. We were tight with Robo, and he showed us, like, different movements to get it to where it was unstuck. And then we were at Milford Tournament in January because it was right around my birthday, which is coming up. So, like, January 26th, that weekend. And then we had to get surgery because it was stuck. And then he ended up wrestling in the tournament and still, still placed third, you know, Jeez, one of the best kids in the country. You remember that story? Like he had Johnson. Do you remember that? So yeah. Him and Johnson wrestled in the state semis, shame on Ohio, you know, shame on that. But then they wrestled in the NCAA finals. I mean, the Ohio the nationals that year, whatever they called it back then, the senior nationals. The NHSCA. Got first and second that year had to wrestle in the semis. Um, so yeah, it's just, that's why I don't, I'm not a big game guy, <laughs> but you got to make it fun. I guess our way of making it fun was let's go to movies. Let's hang out together. Let's eat and let's do those kind of things. But once you get in that room, man, it's business. Let's go. Agreed. Gr growing up with all those brothers and family, what, uh, obviously it wasn't fun at times. Do you have memories growing up with the older brothers though, whether it sucked or something that was fun? <laughs> No, we, I mean, I, that's what I used to get asked all the time. Like, are, are you the best or are you, the, are you going to be the best? And I'd say, well, I better be, you know, I had five older brothers to teach me and then beat me up. And yeah, we, I took some beatings growing up, you know, and, uh, and, and loved it though. It was like, you know, you know, how it is. you grow up, you got your Zeb, you're young, young, you got older brothers and you grow up and those guys are your heroes. You know, you grow up and you go watch them. And from the time I could barely walk, my mom and dad would take me places. Dad would never be, you know, dad would, leave mom alone and go do his own thing at the tournaments and mom would sit there with all the kids and take care of us and those were your heroes man so yeah we got beat up i got beat up a lot and then it was ready my time i was ready to go your dad one of the most iconic photos i've ever seen at the ohio state tournament i believe it was you your yeah. dad jumped the gate and ran up on the mat and it wasn't on a the stage then it was just on the floor but he ran to the mat and like jumped in your arms, didn't he? So we got two of those. Mike, Mike actually has one where it was back at St. John's and, and, you know, remember how small he was. My uncle literally lowered him down by his hands and he hung there and he's only five, what, five foot four. <laughs> and your dad was so he, tiny dropped, guy. he probably had to drop two feet to the floor. And then he ran on the mat, Mike, when he wanted as a freshman. So that's a great picture. He had the hat on, but then there's one with me where, he just stepped over the railing and the guy didn't even argue with him. And he just ran on the mat and, and gave me a hug. I think that's when we might've either tied or broke the, you know, the brother record that year. And then he, um, he, um, I carried him out to the middle of the mat and then took him back out. But yeah, that's I, if that one, he has his legs around me and everything. Yeah. That's the one I'm talking about where his legs are around you. That's the one. Yeah, That's pretty cool. The old man was a good dude, man. The old man it was, it was old. It was Mike, wasn't it? Yes. He was Mike. Is Mike your brother, Mike jr. Then no different um middle names. names yep but the old man was mike and he owned emilio's correct right is emilio still a thing or did covid shut it down oh it's still there we um we kept it open it was kept open during um covid we the carry out we had carry out and delivery so it, you know people were still i mean it was it was crazy busy you know they were they were uh everybody was eating out and getting deliveries and everything still so um, they had to do some special things, you know, like waiting outside and come in and leave, but, um, it, it, it stuck it out, you know, good product, good people, good family. Everybody loves, you know, when I say family, like the customers are family, everybody's family there, you know? So, um, they, they, they supported and everything. We opened it, they opened it back up in July and, uh, 
it's still kicking. West Columbus, right? Right. West right Columbus, Emilio's West Columbus, best salad I've ever had. Maybe more of the more uh, more unhealthy salads I've ever had, but the <laughs> best salad I've ever had from Emilio's. Am I wrong? No, it, it, you're not wrong at all. It's uh, <laughs> is that you eat? I don't believe you eat salad. Well, only when it's, it's Emilio's. Really, I mean, dude, they doctor it up, and it's like uh, it's like a fat cheese. guy salad. You got some provolone cheese in there. You got and, and a lot in our cooked pepperoni. That just people just go all day. It is so good, and then it's got little peppers like pepperoncinis or. Uh, banana peppers that aren't sliced the last the one i had last time was that a tailgate i want to say yeah yeah oh keith used to elder blue used to have those tailgates yeah, at, yeah. At football games oh delicious so good um, you remember, that was you wasn't it was that you that when we were in there when after a clinic at maybe old and tangy liberty when it first opened up and we went back in there and i think you posted a video was that you that had like david taylor and all yeah, the yeah, yeah david taylor the, the steber brothers and mean yeah. gene yep I just found there. those videos. I should send you some of those videos, dude. They're That'd hilarious. Be, I remember that. That was fun. Wasn't David, wasn't it something weird like David wasn't allowed to eat pizza or something? I don't know what it he, was. I don't know. It yeah, paid yeah. off. I can tell you it paid off this year. I, he had to be careful with his uh, diet because, you know, he had a strict diet. But we're like, come on, you can sneak a slice, you know. But we Got the job done this year, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he he crushed the hopes and dreams of 60 million Persians. So, I mean, I'm not mad at him. All right. No, I mean, hey, so, listen, he crushed their hopes and genes so bad that their minister of wrestling went on a talk show and said death to America. Did you know that? I just saw it. Oh, man. I just it's think it's cool. global, global politics uh, mixing with sports, right. right? But how great. You know, that's that's the kind of place Emilio's is. It's like everybody comes in there and it, we have all the wrestling photos up on the wall. And it's uh, it's really cool. The history up there from that place is the picture of your dad and is both pictures of your dad being picked up by mike and picked up by you in there yeah so you know what here's another interesting you know how they're they do that um that wall at this at the shot during the state tournament we were with yeah. all the lead yeah, yeah. The lead three times whatever. champs four times champs you and yes. jared are both on it i'm not let's okay so keep going yeah so they they, they asked me for a picture sure it's been a couple years now because when they did it but the 90s but I try to submit that picture and they, they, he's like, ah, can't see your face. So they put a different picture up, but I, I really wanted that picture up, but you see more dad's face than mine. When I say iconic, I mean, that is iconic, right? It is iconic because I I just remember it like so vividly. Was that in the Cincinnati garden? Yeah, I think so. Oh, what a horrible venue. Yeah, dude. Oh, Hey, we had, my year is pretty interesting fact. Uh, You know, we were, uh, we had Matt Derlin and myself we we both were three-time champs but won them at three different locations oh, wow. okay so you won st john's garden nutter mm-hmm. center correct yep and then you and dernland you and derns i think those were the only two i think we were the only one that did it three we, we were both three timers that year wow um, but we won this team title in, in the gardens as well but i you know it was you're right it was a it was a shithole but it was <laughs> special because that yeah. guys i Listen, you probably know, I don't know if you saw, but we, in the in the I was just telling someone about this last week because they keep I get asked that all the time. Like, where was this garden? Because I think there's a casino there, right? Or something. It's now. gone. I believe yeah, it's, it's gone. gone. But I think it's where they put their casino. So afterwards in the showers, man, it was like a scene from Rocky when he fought in, in Russia. Like it, it it seemed like the the ceiling was a foot from us, and I'm short, and then it had light bulbs hanging down, like all the way through. We're like dude literally like in the in those freezing cold water no heat but we didn't care because we just won this team's title and you know everybody was pumped and we were like let's go you know who cares this is awesome did how many team titles throughout those 11 state titles i think you guys won in 87 87 right um yeah 87 mike's soft a sophomore year 87 and then 91 so then you guys won three and was stoli the coach for two of those yeah, well, only the one. He only left eighty-seven. He left my freshman year. Okay. And um, but he won that. But we have, you know, I probably what six or so runner-ups. But Jesus. my my year, Adam was a senior when I was a freshman. We got second, and then we got second my senior year too. Wow. Well, there's a lot of we had a lot of runner-ups in there, but champ your junior year. Yes. At the Garden. Yep. Is, is that the last Columbus area school to win any division in OHSA state wrestling individual tournament team yeah. team title? Yeah. Wow. The draw. Hey, 
it feels like that drought could come to an end because the big schools are really starting to come up. Dublin, uh, was it Kaufman? Kaufman's got a team this year, man. Yep. They got a team. It depends on numbers that they qualify, but they got a shot, man. Yeah. They, I mean, they got a, about every weight class, right? They're yeah. solid, solid everywhere, but yeah, it's been a while, man. It's uh, that's crazy. I mean, man. kind of, you know, the wrestling in, in our, in our league kind of went down, the Catholic league went down, but we're, they're starting to, you know, like Palmer's doing a good job. It looks like they're putting some guys back up, but you gotta get the numbers out, but that's, that's the problem. Well, Watterson in a couple of years here, right? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're building, right. They got their, uh, they got the, everything coming right there. They got, the, they got it all. They're going to be the next team. I think that's going to be able to challenge Graham if they stay in division two, but you always think someone's going to challenge Graham and they just re oil the machine and fuel it up. It's crazy. Yeah. It's wild. Uh, so listen, originally when we wanted to, you know, we could talk all night about the Sabados and uh, Reedy and all the greats that you guys have had, but originally, you know, today's such a historic day. Girls wrestling has been sanctioned. Can you walk us through the process? Did you have to crawl through the mud a lot? How resistant was it? Did New Jersey and California and some of these other states really help you guys? Who did you beg, borrow, steal from a little bit? Ideas. How was the whole process to, to get uh, girls wrestling sanctioned by the Ohio High School Athletic Association down? So, honestly, you know, Vanessa did a lot of the, a lot of the, the work. Um, as far as where we were concerned, you know, we would hear – when I was the president for those two years and vice president, even we, you know, we've talked about a lot of things and people would come up to us and, you know, we tried to change a lot from the coach association when I first got in, because it was kind of like, Hey, not as much structure as, as there is now. When we first got there, it was kind of like, Hey, here's what we're doing, but no rhyme or reason. So I, I'm pretty anal with some things. So I organized. So I, um, we said, Hey, here's some goals we want to try to do. And people kept bringing up wrestling, girls, wrestling, girls, wrestling. And, you know, it's like, well, how many girls are there, you know, and, and kind of for the first year it was kind of like, nah, we listened to it, but, and had some discussions, but really weren't, weren't equipped to go forward on our end, just because we were just trying to, you know, we were just trying to get our association under control. Right. So that second year when I, it's two year deal. So, you know, the, the talks keep coming up and, and we it got pushed a little bit more. So literally on, it was March 31st of, of 19. You know, there was a clinic at Marysville and it was, I think they did something for girls and like there was two different, three different rooms. I remember Carrie Colot was there. So they had people from all over coming in. I think Rudis probably sponsored it and you know, a great event. And I said, you know what, let's go meet with some people. Um, so we had probably four or five of us from our association. Vanessa was there, um, the shores Castro, you know, some people that represent the girls. And um, it was funny because I had already gone in saying, we're going to do this. You know, I got time. Let's just go. You don't have to sell me. Let's just, it, it's, it's the time I've got time to do it. And we're going to take charge. And uh, it's funny. The shores came and they had a, they had a big, you know, they want to do a presentation with me. They, they put, they put their presentation on a poster board and it was all this stuff. And I was like, I, it, was, it was just great. You know, it was like, they're trying to sell me. I said, guys, we don't need to do that. And I, I probably cussed a few times. I said, pardon me, but listen, now let's just figure out how we're going to get this done. I don't, you don't have to sell me, you know? And um, so from that, from that point on, it just kind of, we, we just start getting ideas from, from each other. Honestly, at first it was, it was uh, just within our state, but then, you know, Vanessa had her connections and we get some ideas, but as far as that first year, as far as just running the girls tournament, it was, it was mostly our, you know, our, our state and our people getting our heads together. And um, you know, but we, we stole some ideas from all the different States, like weight classes and, and structure, you know, but we only had, I think 250 girls that first year in the, in the tournament. So everything was a little different. We didn't have a, I'm sorry. We didn't have a district. We didn't have a, we didn't have anything like that. So it was almost like an open tournament. Like you'd have a, Hey, let's just bring everybody and let's go. And um, so after that, then it started picking up where, Hey, now we're going to start talking to, you know, sanction wrestle like a girl, all those organizations got involved, but I kind of, I kind of let, let the, the rest of the group, Vanessa and all those, the coaches kind of run that stuff. But um, I, I do want to say this because it's, it's kind of gotten, uh, it, it rubs me a little wrong because I love Tyler Brooks. Tyler Brooks is at Ohio high school and, and we met with him a lot and, and he's been great with just men's wrestling, boys wrestling, everything from day one, when he took over for Bo, um, even when he was Bo's understudy, never been nothing but supportive. Right. So um always come to been at every state term we've had support everything but 
you know, they have bylaws. It, it says in their bylaws, it's a three year, you have to be a program for three years. So, you're, you know, you have to have run a, a tournament and have a, uh, what we've done for three years and, and then prove, you know, financials and, and structure and numbers and all that stuff. So they've been up front with me anyways, from day one. Um, so I, I, I just want to say, Hey, he's been supportive. And I think it would know Ohio high school. Everybody's like, it's about time and you're waiting too long. Hey guys, they have bylaws too, right? Just like everybody else. So to me, that was important that um, this is the year though. If, if they would have not come out and said, they're going to do it now, then there, then there would have been some problems, you know, but um, they've been, they've been out with us from, and then Doug Ute was great once he took over and um, supportive of us. So I think they're excited about it. They've been excited from day one. They saw that growth from year one to two was crazy. You know, we doubled our numbers in one year. That's crazy. Almost, and almost tripled them since year one. And what's wild is you, the two names that keep coming up are, you know, Dr. George Shore, right? Mm -hmm. And then Vanessa Oswald. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And without those two, I mean, <clears throat> that sounds like those are the driving force behind it. And what's wild about it is Olivia Shore made history last year in the state of Ohio as our first girl state placer in the boys state tournament in Division yeah. Three. She took sixth at 106 pounds. And she was a hammer and she's going to be, I think she's got future world teams ahead of her. You know, it could be an Olympian, but George Shore, I don't know if there's ever been a bigger advocate for girls wrestling besides Vanessa Oswald, right? Like they, they get it and they're really, yeah. really, really invested in it and behind it. Yeah. That um, George, his outfits, I love his outfits. You know, it was like <laughs> at the state tournament, he had a different, different color suit on and crazy stuff from day one, but no, the, he, he's been great. And um you know, th those were the initial guys that, you know, once they did, and then he kind of like stepped back with us and said, you guys are doing it, keep doing and would offer some things. But um, as far as my group that I look at, like Vanessa and, and Brian are, have been unreal. Um, um, Brian Nicole. Brian Nicole. Her, yeah. He's coach with them. So that guy just doesn't stop, man. He's got that Italian blood and he's like, he doesn't take no for an answer, you know? So sometimes we had to pull his reins back, but um, you know, there's a lot of key key people. Jeff Martin was a, a, a person in the background um, that was just great that um, offered, gave me so much help when we run these tournaments and, and just doing the little, little leg work, he, rankings and everything that made our first tournament just as special as it was. I couldn't do without guys like that. So yeah, there's a lot, but, uh, but I'd say, you know, Vanessa's the girl. She's a, she's, she's awesome. She's the first, uh, I went to the weight tournament when it was like a real tough tournament Toledo weight. And it was like, might've been 03, 04, 04, 05, I forget. But I saw Vanessa was just housing dudes. I'm like, oh my God, this girl can roll. She, she wrestled can roll. against her. So she's from obviously West Mount Vernon here in, in town. Yeah. But Mikey Davis was a state runner up for me. And um, they had to wrestle a few times. And, you know, Mikey was a stud, the state runner up. So he took care of business. But um, yeah, that was, was like, I told someone that today when we're talking about this, you know, the sanctioning today, I said, I said, man, I used to coach against her. And they're like, what? Really? So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty special. She's, and she's another one. She doesn't take, she doesn't like no either. She doesn't take no for an answer much either. So I think she wrestled our guy, Josh Sasby. I think they wrestled. Did she wrestle Josh? I think, well, I we'll have to verify that. They're so young. It's like hard, hard for me to wrap my brain around it. Cause they're super young. It's Dom, were you in 92 grad of high school? 91. You're 91. Okay. I'm 98. Jared's 99. It's crazy to think about it. Like, <laughs> like the, we're talking about these people that are grown ups. I and know. We remember when they were like kids and they were wrestling in high school. It just blows my mind to think about it. It goes I mean, quick, doesn't it, Dom? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you think about with Nicola, he used to be at West High School um, years ago and he had girls wrestling. I mean, so he's been pushing this, you know, been just an advocate for anybody for years and years. And, uh, you know, it's, it, those guys, I'm, I can imagine what they're doing right now. Hopefully it's popping a few. So, right. You, <laughs> I hope they are too. So have you seen some of the young talent that we have in Ohio and in, in girls wrestling? Yeah, man, it's oh even, God. I'll tell you what, from year one to year two, I was amazed, you know, cause it was like that first year it was like pin, 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 the whole state tournament. We're like, okay, we're getting out of here. You know, it's going to be a fast one. Um, and then the next year, just the skill levels from year one to year two was amazing. Um, I stopped in a room last week and, and, and or a couple weeks ago before Christmas up at Westville North and they have a girl up there. And I, I, I told Gio, I, we, he was in town. So we went up there to work out with, with, uh, you know, get a workout in. And he, um, I said, dude, come and look at this. You know, this girl, 
she's hitting single legs and swoop singles and all the stuff. And I was like, man, like she's hitting better. I had to, I had to actually jump in and be her drill partner for a couple moves because she was better than the guy she was drilling with. And he didn't know how to handle the move, you know, give the right defense and everything. So it's like, here, hit it on me. And I was like, see, you know what you're doing. It just looks awkward because your partner does. So yeah, it's, it's, it's impressive. It's getting much better in this short amount of time. Wow. That's awesome. I love so, it. so what's it look like now then? Like how involved, you know, you, you know, Brian, Vanessa, what's it look like? You know, obviously you're going to get through this year, but then next year, I mean, you're, are you working alongside Tyler and kind of, so, yeah, so the last meeting that we actually, I, I was attended was um, in the fall. And so we had, we actually met, this is when we it started getting real. Like they were bringing in people from the Ohio high school, like their finance people and, and lawyers and stuff to, to kind of get an idea of what, what's actually happening. Um, so in that there was a mention and, and I don't know what their plan is. I haven't heard much else, but they even said, maybe, you know, going forward, we have like your group could be like a liaison for us for once we take it over and they're, um, you know, maybe, I don't know if it means like an athletic board type thing, or if it's, you know, they just, they need a point person. I, I'm not sure yet. So I'm sure that's going to be common discussions about that if they want it, you know, like I told them, I always joke about it. I'm like, I'm done. You know, I don't want this, you know, like it's too much work and everything, but, but, you know, and Talking I always about though, right. When you stopped, stepped out of coaching, it, it kind of all fell in place. Kind of right. Yeah, and it keeps me yeah the like, people and you, right. Go. So, yeah. So I told him that day, I said, yeah, you know, this is our baby, man. This is like my baby. One of, you know, we're not going to just say, take it over and let it go. We're going to make sure this is done right. So yeah, we want to keep you involved in any way we can um, and, and help them out and let it keep growing because, you know, we, we help start it and let's, let's finish this thing. Let's keep it going. I love it. I love it. I love hearing that, you know, the, the amount of passion that went behind it and the people it's the usual suspects too. That's what I really like. It's the same, same names, same people keep coming up. And they, they were tenacious about it. And right. it doesn't hurt when you sprinkle a little Dom DeSabato in there. But I realize, like, you keep, you know, deflecting any attention onto them. And I, I appreciate that because I know those people really crawled through the mud for a long time and wanted it. And what's crazy is, you know, Olivia Shore missed it. She actually missed out on the OHSA sanctions. But I don't think that's going to matter to George because I think he's just a tenacious guy that's, you know, an advocate for, for girls wrestling. No, and, you know, that's the other thing, like, I, I, and I've watched someone, um, Gore posted, reposted a video today of um, when we interviewed from the first state tournament. And, and it, you know, I, I get choked up still watching it today. I got teary eyed. But, um, you know, the thing is, is like, it's so much work and you put so much time in. Jerry, you know what it's like. But we, um, we, you forget that. And once that day started, you just forget all the work you put in because you watch these girls and the excitement they have and, and the, seeing them win a match and even when they lose a match they're they're still just excited to be there and it's pure you know wrestling girls wrestling is so pure right now and and um hopefully it keeps that way the, the guys will probably the guy coaches will probably screw that up but um you know trying to break <laughs> break rules there. i'm serious like we've already had to, we've already had to like scold a couple people and say you can't do that You're like you know we're we follow the rules so um but looking back george was from day one you know, after he, I don't know how many times he came up to me at that first state tournament and just said thank you and hugged me and everything. What do you need, coach? Anything you need, anything like that. So, um, yeah, you you forget all the work you put into it and watch that. And then I remember uh, this was this was like really special to me. You remember Mike Lanise played football at Ohio State. He was a wide receiver. You guys might be too. <laughs> you guys I'm, are. Young. I think I'm too young for that. Mike Lanise yeah. was Chris Carter's site. He was he was his, they were number one and number two in the eighties. Yes. Okay. So they were, they were number one, number two. And Mike Lanise was a brilliant, smart guy. He was a road scholar too. And um, so like Chris Carter was on one side, he was on the other. That's how they were studs. And um, you know who Chris Carter is, right? Of course. Right. Okay. Thank you. So <laughs> I got that one. So was Mike Leister their quarterback or Tupa? God, it might've been Tom Zaki. Was it, what year was that? Tom Zaki. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly. Okay. I don't think it was Sleaster. He was already, he was already gone. Older, but anyways, yeah. Lenise's daughter was, was one of the original state champs. And, and she had actually come to our, Adam and I do us in my, in our boys, we always did a, a to Sabato camp in the summer. And Mike Lenise called us, called me one time. And I, I remember I was at my pool and I was hanging out and he's like, Hey, this is Mike Lenise. And I'm interested in getting my daughter in your, in your camp. And she was probably in seventh grade at that time. And I was like, Mike Lanise, like I was, that's my, you know, you grew up watching football, you love high state football. I'm like, dude, 
this is the Mike Lee. You know, I was so excited. And he was like, no, man, you guys. So it was like we were like loving on each other for a minute. But then, <laughs> then he came, she came to camp. But um, the cool thing was when she won the state tournament, she was the one girl that came up to me when we were tearing down and gave me a big hug. And it's like, dude, that's, you know, what do you do? You just, oh, it's all about, right? You just love that stuff. A little gratitude, right? A little, you know, just thanks, appreciative, and just right. lo- love it. They love yeah, it, and they're it just happy. It meant that much there. to her. It meant that much to her that she had that chance to wrestle, and that's that's what it's all about, man. And and I and in that interview, I said, who's going to tell your daughter they can't wrestle? You know, if, if, if my daughter came to me and said, I want to wrestle, or if, if I took my daughter to something and somebody else said she's not wrestling, no, there's a fight, man. There's a fight right there. You're not telling – I'm not telling my daughter she can't wrestle, and you're not telling her she can't wrestle. And that's, that's kind of the attitude I've taken in the last couple of years. So here's the million dollar question for both of you. You two are both hashtag girl dads. Jared, you got four. Yep. Dom, four. how many you got? Two, one or two? Two boys and a, and a daughter. Two boys and a daughter, right? All right. How old's the daughter? She's 19. She's, she said, I'm never wrestling dad. I'll go watch the boys. <laughs> you just answered the question. Okay. She's not wrestling, right? Jared. Are we going to be able to at least get bat 250 and get one upper girl to wrestle? So my oldest, actually, I think it was seventh grade. Um, she tried it for about a week and she was loving it and then got talked out of it to go back to basketball. And she's still doing basketball. Um, and then I have twins that are eight uh, and they just got into jujitsu. So we'll see. That we'll, oh, that's not far that. off, man. So we'll see. They're just starting that though, and they're loving that. So you know, I don't know how long that how long that's gonna last, but uh, you know, if they want to do it, I'm gonna, like you said, you're gonna support it, and I'm gonna whatever they want to do. You know, push. You know, make sure they put the best effort forward, whatever they do. So it see, just doesn't sound like girls wrestling's in for feet, each of you, each either of your families. It doesn't sound like uh, it's gonna happen. Zeb, it was like it was different back then. You know, with me, that's the other part. Like. She was, she would have been, she was wrestling boys. She'd have been wrestling boys. Like she'd come to youth practice with me or like the cool thing with me, coach. And my kids were at my practice every day for 19 years, you know, or whatever, the, you know, however many until they were in high school, but they would come to practice. Cause you know, instead of paying for a babysitter, the, the school bus would drop them off at Davidson. They'd walk in, come up to practice. And so I got them there every day. And then I'd take them to kids practice with me. And so she tried a few times and just loved it like fun, but she's like, no way I'm competing. I just want to go re- roll around a little bit. And then, um, but you know, it's different now because right. they get- it wasn't that long ago, but it's completely different than, you know, five, 10 years ago, completely yeah, you, different. You get to wrestle a girl instead of the boys, you know, yeah. so it's a whole different ball game. Way different. Uh, where does she go to college? She go to college. She's at, um, Columbus state, her second, she graduated last year, but was able to take courses through Columbus state through our school. We have a little program that the school pays for it. So she, she's finishing up. She's got a 4.0 and, um, She's on her second last semester at Columbus State, and then she's going to transfer to High State next year. I was just going to say, is she going to be a Bobcat or is she going to be a Buckeye? She's it's going to be one or the other. You know what? She's she's like, I don't need to go away and spend a bunch of money. I'm just going to stay here. And she's she's pretty – she's she's sharp, right. man. She's she's on it. That's crazy that you have that practical of a kid. I Man, I hope I have that someday. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I have that someday. It, 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 <laughs> be right. I'm oh, a Oh my God. Okay. So your son Gio is in his fifth year at Ohio, uh, Ohio U? In his fourth year. So fourth year. Fourth year. He technically could get with the COVID. He could have two more years with how COVID treated it, right? Two more years left after oh this. Oh my goodness. Great. He could be a doctor before he leaves that place. It could be like Nietzsche. No kidding. It's oh, crazy. Man. Iowa's whole team, right? <laughs> Iowa's whole team, Nietzsche. Uh, I mean, uh, Massa. I mean, there's a lot of these guys who are in their six, seventh years. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know if I'd have to. I don't know what that. you guys say. I'm not a big fan of that, man. I don't. I know. think we're going to see less doing that though. Once you know, it's too hard for one. It's right. So I mean, hard. It, it sounds you know promising. Then it gets to it, and then it's like okay, you know, the wear and tear. Hey, and then I, I'm I got I got somebody in the game of it, so I, I'm probably a little bit more personal. But I, I I'll say this: you you wrestle four national tournaments, man. Die, you're done, right? It's crazy. I just, you know, why get them fifth? Why give those guys a fifth year? But I don't know. I got a son in the game, so I'm probably a little bit more biased there. But right, it's um, rewarding the wrong guy, right? <laughs> it's the, the uh, guys that missed out didn't get that. Yeah, right. That's, that's the thing. craziest thing about your Colin Moores got yeah. screwed the worst by it, right? Like I feel for that guy, but that's I mean, you know how that guy is. That guy's just a cool, happy kind of go lucky dude. 
But imagine those guys who like it. Just, and I know it crushed his dreams. I get that. But he's been blessed with like kind of a not psycho attitude or mentality, right? Like, so that guy I'm okay with. That guy, that guy's going to be okay. He'll find peace, right? And then you rewarded all these other guys who were juniors. You reward them with essentially two more years. Yeah, it didn't make, Crazy. Doesn't make sense to me. It didn't make any sense. And I, yeah, it kind of financially too, with these programs already on the, <laughs> well, they let them fundraise. I believe I leave some of them regardless them of the fundraise fund- that like six and seventh year money. We got it. Right you know, I don't even know how it works, honestly, dude, but they, you, you already have to fundraise and you're fundraising just so you can right. go to, right. go to, go to the Navy tournament or Tiffin or anything like that. And now you got to fundraise so you can help these guys come to school. Right. But okay, you know, get this straight. Ohio state don't have to fundraise. No, that's the thing. The programs that are Michigan getting, and Penn State don't have to fundraise. Iowa, the, the teams that are you're seeing it the yeah. most out of, they got plenty, right? Yeah, they're good. Yeah. We know that, right? Like it's it's just crazy. But how proud are you of the results this year from from you know Gio de Sabato, right? Gio right. de Sabato was he struggled at 125. He was massive. It looked like he was battling weight more than he was battling opponents. How good do you feel about him at 33? How good do you feel about the results and your your son finally getting to kind of breathe, be right. at the, a better weight for him? How, do, how does that make you feel? Yeah, you know, just proud. You just just the fact that he's out there competing. Period. You're proud, you know. But you always want to see your kids go out there and compete the, at their best level. And and I didn't, you know, maybe his first year he did when he was at 25, but then you know the next couple of years it was a struggle just making weight. So. And he knows it. It's, it's not like I'm saying we haven't something we had a conversations about, but, you know, being at the, at, at a cutting all that weight, man, you're, you're battling your opponents, the weight, and then you got to go beat a college wrestler, division one wrestler after that. So I'm just happy that he's out here having fun again. And he's, and he's, and he's wrestling like Gio's capable of wrestling, you know? So I don't know, you know, we'll see how that goes wrestling, man, how far he can go with it, but we're both having fun. He's having fun watching. I'm, I'm loving wrestling. I'm loving watching him go. I'm, we're getting on the car on Saturday morning and driving to Chicago for, you know, we're going to Northern Illinois duel for one duel. You know, I get to do that because I don't coach anymore. So coach Horn and I are going to drive six hours, spend the night and come home Sunday. You know, we get to watch him. So he's, he's just excited again about wrestling. And, and that's, that's the most important thing. And they got it, you know, so use solid this year. They're going to, they're going to give your boys a little run for the money by guys. Hey, I made the uh, trophy. Have you ever seen the trophy that we made? Oh Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I didn't make it. Scott honest, Blank though. made it. A guy named Scott well, Blank. Doesn't know you have that trophy right now? I believe Kent has it. Kent won last year. Did they win last year? Oh, you oh you're oh you was a dumpster fire last year with all the COVID nonsense. Oh, uh, well, that doesn't even count, man. <laughs> Hold on, though. No. Count those Hold guys on. are allowed to wrestle seven years. Why that year doesn't even count, right? Yeah, but the, I think the trophies in Kent. I mean, t- to your point, the trophies in Kent. Is it? Is it? I, I, I honestly though, will almost. I almost want to throw last year's results out. Mm-hmm. There, there was such a dumpster fire for them last year. I had Joel on the show. Yeah, talk to Andre. See who talks to Joel, and I'm like, oh, you know, you're right. What I, they had to do last year at Ohio University in Athens, Ohio, was was a travesty. Well, Geo was Geo had COVID last year, so he only wrestled like two matches. So. Yeah, that was uh, I don't I I didn't go, I wasn't around. But two was years wrong. ago, what happened to those kids last year at Ohio University was wrong. They had one national qualifier, I believe, right? Um, t- two. They Ted had two. Um, Gian and Hagen. Hagen and Gian. Three. Maybe did they have? Did they get a third? Uh, I because hey, one of them got in on on a late. It was two, Hagen and, and Guillen. And yeah. then we, had, we had a returning, or we have a returner. Ernest didn't qualify. Right, but he's a returning. He's a returner from two years ago, yeah. Right. What what happened to him was just like, it really it rubbed me the wrong way. And then Andres, he's like, oh, my God, you should have heard what Joel had to deal with all year. And I was like, oh, it made me sick. It made me sick. I had him on the podcast. And, you know, you know, you know Joel, big, happy, jolly, go, you know, happy-go-lucky guy. <laughs> He wouldn't say boo about it though. You know, he was, uh, he's, you know, he's old school, man. He's like, listen, we got to deal with what we got to deal with. Let's just go out and work hard and win, you know, and yeah. rest, compete. And, and I like that, you know, it's kind of what, how I grew up, but I, it's exciting to watch those guys wrestle the whole team. They got it. They're OU, they're Ohio boys. And um, it, it's fun. They got, they got a good team when they're nice and healthy and ready to go. Yeah. I like fun. watching them. They wrestle pretty good. Yeah. And I think like you're saying, I'd have to give them the, the nod over Kent this year. 
if the duel happens, right? I I don't think you're wrong. I, I'm I'm not arguing with you. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, some kids got some tough kids. I mean, obviously, yeah, they, they got some guys. We saw them at Navy, but I don't I don't know if they had their whole team there. Um, yeah, their 33 pounder could have a breakout. Fenton, the two time state champ for malaria. I'm kind of waiting for him to up, explode. Yeah. You bring that up. That's who beat Geo in the finals. Is that a PG? I wasn't even. That's not why I brought it up. <laughs> I'm kidding. Not why I brought it up. I wouldn't do no, that to you, man. No, no. Listen, they wrestled. They wrestled at, at, at Navy. Um, Did yeah, they? That's who, beat Gio, and that's who beat Gio in the um, state finals that year. We remember we, that match. We were Gio was winning, con- kind of controlling the whole match, and then Fenton hit that jump over when Gio shot a single scramble. He literally jumped over Gio, and, and now it's illegal. But um, Gio went to hit a single, and he literally looks and he's behind him he jumped straight over top of him wow wow but you know they, they, were, they would call that a point for geo now yeah yeah wow dude and I mean, maybe because that match i don't know but no they're they were buddies they they, they got along and they they end up wrestling at um at navy and it was like a one to zero or one to two to one match no who, take who out. won the fit and beat him two to one and beat geo two did he it was a uh, i mean dude it was it was a battle there was maybe a couple scrambles where they both shot in, but they both were just too much respect for each other. Cautious. Go wrestle. You know what I mean? Go wrestle. Yeah. You know, it was early, early season. No, Let the fur fly. Let the be fur fun fly. Don't be conservative. Season. A lot of these guys are protecting a lot. I get it because, you know, they, you got to win rank matches. You can't lose the Mac guys. That hurts you at the Mac tournament. But didn't you know have a great tournament. I think he got third there and Gio got fifth, but they, he had a hell, he had a hell of a tournament. So he's, yeah. he's a stud. You know what he say? He's a stud. So. That'll be a good match. I'm I'm kind of excited for that one, and it's in Kent, so hopefully I can make it to it. Um, yeah, I a lot of other ones up and down the way. We got, are both Hagens in the twins, right? Yes, they're both in 41, 49? 41, 49, yeah. And then Slivka at fifty seven. Yeah, that kid's fun. I love him. His dad. So Slivka can roll. Uh, big Perrine fan. How about him, man? He's having a good year, right? That's Jeez, a that's, that's, that's a boy. That's a man. That is a that's a true freshman. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. I like watching OU. That they're fun to watch. Uh, who are they going to put out at two eighty five? Ernest. Yes. Okay, because they, they got Padilla too, don't they? I, I th- Ernest, I think's the guy, right? I mean, I don't even think because there was a we didn't even have a guy when um, Ernest had COVID a couple weeks ago, and he, they couldn't wrestle when we wrestled Indiana. Okay. And, we didn't even put anybody out, so I don't know if he's hurt or what. Um, yeah, but nobody wrestled a bunch. That was a weird. They wrestled like four. Or they did like Arizona State and Michigan did, right? If they would have, weird. If, well, if they would have had anybody, they would have put him out there because Indiana had their guy there. We just didn't. We I think it was contact tracing maybe, but they're. Um, yeah, that's all Arizona State's was. Do you realize that? Yeah. No, nobody had COVID in that. Did you see that whole thing we're talking about? It was, yeah. <laughs> that you saw where they made Arizona State. Yeah, that's why I'm like, you I know why they had to wear masks. Do you know why Arizona State had to wear masks? No. Nope. Maricopa County had a close contact mandate. You got to understand that match took place in Austin, Texas. Yeah, right. They were following county rules from a county like a thousand miles away. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to Lee Pritz about it, and he's like, dude, you know we don't want to wear masks, man. Come on. I go, Pritz, there's one thing I know about you. You don't care about masks. You want a sauna. You want to work out. You want to hang out in the pool, and you want to, like, make some recruiting calls. Right? You don't I, want to wear masks nowhere. Even non-wrestling people would ask me, said stuff to me. Did you see where those, they were making them wear masks? And I'm like, don't, let's not talk about it, man. This Mike is- Novogratz. Mike Novogratz, who's, like, you know, one of the most liberal guys out there, right? He was like, this is terrible. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. So it was something where I think uh, the trainer, you know, the trainer had to follow these rules and was like, right. only way they can go on the mat is if they have this and then, we, you know, they'll shut it down and they, they did it. So they could have four matches, whatever. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it, but I'll take it. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> whatever. I'll take it. Um what else? What do you watch? What are you, are you just a Buckeye fan? What do you, besides the Bobcats, are you a Buckeye fan then by default? Oh yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Buckeye. So yeah, I, I'll root for him. And um, you know, I don't go to a lot of matches. Um, I don't know, man, it's weird. I've been around wrestling so many times. I went with uh, my brother, Mike and Mark Coleman. We went to the um, early season match. It was at NC state, I believe. And um, you know, the hammer wanted to go. And so we, we went and watched uh, some wrestling early on and, 
but that, that's, I, you know, I don't mind watching on TV, you know, like I'll probably, I'll watch tomorrow on TV and, and they drag them on too long, man. These college matches, Coleman and I were standing and, and you know, Coleman, he's just like, Dude, why is this so long? You know, because you have to take an intermission and then there's five minutes in between each match. Cause they want to do announcing. And it's like, I get it. You know, some people are into that, but not me. I've been around it too long. Like let's, let's go next, next man up. Let's get it. Let's get easy and easy out. Yeah. Like going to a Bobcat match. I think that's, you know, that's what hurts. That's, that's the, the time and length is what's been hurting our high school kids in wrestling. You know, nobody wants to be at a tournament. Parents don't want to be at a tournament. Youth parents, they don't want to be here for 12 hours, you know, and they're like, that's the worst thing they have to put up with. So let's try to, I get it. You want to make it exciting, but five minutes in between a match is not exciting, you know, just so you can have some announcer walking out there, hooping up the crowd. They want to see these guys wrestle, not you talking, you know, that's my thing. But. 100% efficiency. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're right. Cool. Tom, you're nailing it. That deal with NC State, I think, took like two hours, like 10 matches. Like, there's no reason for this, man. No reason. There's football on. People want to watch the Browns play. Everybody's trying to watch that game. And it's like, let's go. But, but yeah, I'm a Buckeye fan. I, I, uh, and OU's my, where my passion is right now. I'm, I travel a lot to go watch those guys. And, and, um, you know, but I'll be at the NCAA and I'll have my, I'll be rooting for my Buckeyes. Okay. I'm an App State fan now, if you didn't know. Yeah. We were just talking about your nephew. He, he, he get the W tonight. No, he kind of got to put on him a little bit. Okay. He's just pretty, he just brought him out of red shirt he tonight. Back out, man, he's not he's not that mental break yet, right? Mental no, break. he's not there yet, and he's he's a little for the weight. He's like one ninety two, one ninety four. He's just not big for ninety seven. And he wrestled the uh, Caden Russell dude, and the dude's a freak. You got to wrestle someone like that in a in a phone booth. You know what I mean? You can't let that guy have space, dude. The guy blast double them. Jared, did you see when he blast yeah, double? I watched him? it. Blast yeah, he's blast double guy. Do you ever yeah, see? And it was from it's space. Blast. It was from space, right? It was a beautiful double leg, like not quite a random and double leg. Okay, we all get that. And he but ran it was legs. So was, I mean, he was yeah. He's 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 a horse, man. He's he's yeah. Big. And then he gave up five minutes of riding time. Hey, thanks, coach. Well, thanks for my first match back, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? He learned, and I I my, I like his trajectory, and I like you know he's gonna figure it out. He's a good kid. He's a fighter. He didn't give up any near falls. Dude had him turked a yeah, couple yeah, times. He was getting turked. Had boots, and he did fall hard i'm proud of him you know we love the kid too so he was yeah. an undefeated state champ but this isn't division three state tournament anymore this is you know d1 yeah. you're here you've arrived he's gonna figure it out and you know i'm excited you know and like you're saying like your heart's in athens mine is in uh boone right that's where i want to want to get down there and see as much of that as i can right but it's eight hours away A- app state they won the duel right app won the duel yeah they beat the dude, 20 so. something and 22 12 or something six to four so big match was at 149 uh returning all american uh milner beat their run we were i think they were on our schedule but then that might have been one of those they had to cancel and move things around because we were supposed to go to boone ourselves so you ever been there no it's really cool it's like it's like ohio u on steroids yeah bigger mountains around it cool yeah, it's cool. I enjoy it. So yeah, I mean, I'm just yeah, I'm like you. I just a fan. Obviously, like the Golden Flashes, and then I mean, I want to hit see Ohio State win, right? I'm an Ohio guy, so right, right. I like to see them. But how many times did you qualify for them? Once, twice? How many times? Once. 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 Yep. Okay. I mean, man, this is so tough, isn't it? It's so tough. It's so hard, right? From ball game, man. And then oh, man. yeah, and then I I try to have a kid during the time too. That that that's a. You had, wait a minute, what? Yeah, Angelo's, Angelo, my oldest is 29. I had him when I was 20 years old. Like he was born when I was 19 and I turned 20 a month later. So, wow. Yeah, was, uh, oh so did you got to, yeah. So we get, you got to mature a lot more when you're, oh so everybody always says, Talk I'm about that. What was that like? Yeah, it was, it was tough. I mean, it was tough. Wow. You know, I want to trade it for a world though. You know, it's all awesome. But yeah, it's just, God love Nikki. You know, she, she took care of the, she took care of the baby while I was doing my stuff, you know, so his mama. So she's, she's still doing it, you know, still taking care of the kids while I'm, while I'm down here, she's still doing the stuff upstairs. So yeah, they, you know, you got support. I'm sorry. What does he do now? Where's he at? He's, he's doing great, man. He's, he's a, he's a logistics guy. He works for TQL company here in Columbus. He's doing really well. That's awesome. Where does he live? He lives in Hilliard. He's about five minutes from here. Um, Not too far from um, like right off of 270 and cemetery road. If you know, you know, right there in the main, main area by Tuttle Mall. It's, you know, like those exits. So gotcha. Real close. When will you be a grandfather? 
he, they're trying, man. He just got married and uh, they just got married in August. So well, congratulations. Thank you. So they're, they're trying They're We were just with them last night and yeah, they're, they're uh, it was my wife's birthday. So they were, we went out to dinner and yeah, she wanted, she's been talking about, we want babies forever. You know, they want to, they want to throw <laughs> some more wrestlers, I think. <laughs> I love it. If I know the Sabados, there'll be a bunch of them. Yeah. They're, how, they're hey, trying. how many total are, how many, like if you were to go, oh man, there's ten, nine, so there's nine, right? How many of those nine have kids? How many cousins does Geo have essentially, right? Okay, so this might, this might be an easier answer for me. So we, we were getting ready for Christmas and we didn't even have all of them there. We were going to have 44 people at, at my brother's house. And that was with some people being out of town. Um, 44 of us were going to be there. I think there's like 22 grandkids somewhere in that range. So. Yeah, it's it's big, but okay. we don't. You know, you know how it is. You know, just like the Millers. Oh, I know. We don't get in any arguments when we're together, just like the Millers, right? <laughs> That's what I was gonna ask you, right? Like your brothers will just go completely out of pocket. They lose their minds. My brothers will do the same thing, and they'll do it with people you're friends with, and then they want you to side with them. Then they're mad at when you don't side with them because they're completely irrational. How often do you deal with that? Because I deal with it like, dude, Adam and Ferd were best boys, man. They were, they got always like all that. They're, this is fun. They just, yeah, they're, they're, they, they're crazy, but they're awesome. They, they do it. It's passion. Like, you know, I remember talking to Jared about this. It's like, you know, sometimes you got to control the passion, but it's, it's, you know, it's that, that sometimes it takes over, but, you know, you got to try to be level headed. But, um, we're getting there, we're getting a little bit more tame as we get older, I think. So, why is Adam's, that? Adam's actually a grandpa. He's got two little grandkids now. So, yeah, so, he's got his daughter has two, right? Right, right. She was a cheerleader at Ohio State. Right. Yep. So yeah, they're. I mean, she's married. She's the Carfagna. She's married to the Carfagna. So if you know that name from the big food <laughs> service up here and cratering and stuff, so. Adam the seven of his daughters married to what's his name? Sal. Well, Sal used to wrestle. Sal for- Carfagna. Sal wrestled at DeSales. He was a wrestler at DeSales under Lieberger. Uh, oh, under my Dennis. God. Sal Carfagna married – what's Adam's daughter's name? Abby. Oh, my – I was hoping for, like, I Donatella. I think, there was, I think there was 500 people at their wedding. Seriously, man. It was oh, like, my God. Like a godfather scene. <laughs> hey, when you were with Coleman and your brother, did those dudes have – like, that's like – that's a full team of bionic men. Those dudes all got like all new hips and everything, right? Both of them. Yeah, they did. It was good. I haven't seen, it was, it's been a while because of COVID since I, since I'd saw, seen Mark and uh, it was good. He's doing great, man. He's, he's, he's got himself straight and doing well. So it was real good. Holy. And, uh, and he's excited, man. He's loving life right now. So it's, it's fun. That's awesome. That's good to hear. I love it. I love hearing all the Sabato stories, freaking out. My favorite is uh, like just Adam just goes out of pocket all the time. And I remember he won the third and fourth place match at the NCAA tournament. He beat Sinshiro Abi. Abi was a freshman and he went insane. Was he going off on the Penn State coaches? Is that what he was doing? Well, you, you don't know the side story behind that, maybe. Well, that, that's why we got you on. Come on. Dude, if you can go back and find video of this, like his match, if you remember that match he won in the, in the NCAA tournament, he took Sincero down. I don't even know if he got a takedown. Did they call him? He got a fling the mat call, I think. I believe it was, yeah. And, um, it was the edge of the mat call. Yes, but I think it was a fleeing call. Okay. So one and that won it, and that's why he got third. We hosted the Big Tens that year. I was and there. It was in Columbus at St. John's. I was there. Thing happened. The exact same thing happened. He didn't get the point. And, I mean, it was almost – identical match and they didn't give him the point. So Adam was a big 10 runner up instead of big 10 champ. So then they had a rematch for third and fourth and, and almost the exact same thing. So it was kind of like redemption to him. And, you know, it was like, yeah, F you, everybody probably, oh, yeah. right. you know, but yeah, that, that was, was the year. That was the year that Colette knocked yet out. Yep. And it turned into this melee on the mat, like a Russian nationals thing. Dude, he choked him out, and then choked him, yeah. Yetz, when Yetz woke up, he he went nuts. He didn't know what happened. It was like trying to fight everybody because he didn't. He just came back too, and it was it was crazy. So it's like Randleman's on the mat, Raymond Doze is on the mat, and it's how hey, how crazy is that when I say that to you? 
Um, when I say those two names to you, those guys are no longer with us. That blows my freaking mind because that first off, one of the most, the most athletic or electrifying performer in the history of the NCAA tournament. I don't think many people are going to argue with this Kevin Randleman. Would you agree with that? hundred percent. Like mean, freak dude. They used to count. Remember when he jump and count? Oh, and God. Ray Brinzer matches is great. Oh, he Never beat Ray. Brinzer in the finals of that freaking big 10. I was at and wow. Uh, Rex Holman beat Joel Sherritt in the finals of that. Oh my God. What a Ray. freaking 93 big 10 tournament. Remember Ray? Ray had a big upset. Remember, and then he ran around the whole he ran yes. around the whole gym when he was done. Who did he beat? Ostendorp. Yep. Oh my God! Yeah, what man. a freaking tournament! Yeah. I don't remember Schultz. going to that. Yeah. Oh, we drove down in the dad of the the cab of my dad's truck in the bucket in the bench seat. Four of us. <laughs> it sucked, but once we got there, man, it was like, oh my God, I was starry. That was my first Big Ten tournament. I mean, I didn't, I didn't fear anybody in college. I had, I had those boys. We go, we'd go out and I had those guys and and then your brother, like who's, who's going to mess with us. If they didn't, if they didn't, and we're not even adding Coleman in there, you know, like (laughs) turns out we had two of the two UFC hall of famers and, and Edelblut. Let me think about that group of guys that just like, man, they were some tough dudes. We, I was on teammates with man. Yeah, you guys just had some nails, nails, freaking teams yeah. at Ohio State. And I mean, the most electric performer, though, man, Kevin Randleman. Just like I'm mesmerized whenever, like, I can see someone that kind of duplicates the same thing. Like how Burroughs runs people down is is different, right? That because he does like this low double, dude. Randleman would double leg those guys and shoot them upward. Yeah, he would he shoot like them a upward rocket. like a rocket. Yeah, like a rocket, and it was like just and some of his counters were just pure athleticism nothing anybody taught him right it was just a reaction it's just crazy man just like just thinking about it and I, I periodically will watch the highlights i'll watch ufc highlights i'll watch the state tournament highlights and he wrestled split in the finals and it's just awesome thing he was an awesome guy too super think, friendly uh, engaging guy everybody couldn't wait for him to come to mat and do his count as how many jumps he was going to do and how high he'd get could you imagine today's day and age and with the social media and the NIL oh. and all, I mean, you know, it'd be, you know what I, one of the first, dude, you're going to love this story. So we wrestled when I was probably a sophomore and we, what was it? The Sandusky, which, what's, what's yeah, he, he went to Sandusky. Tournament. We always went to your tournament. Reedy would go to it. Oh, and Panther classic. Yeah. Maybe that was it. But St. Mary was that St. Mary or at Sandusky. Yeah. I think we were at Panther awesome. classic. Because your Oak Harbor was there, yep. and yeah, and classic. classic, yeah. And your brother, maybe even your cousins, were wrestling at the same time. That was the one tournament my parents went to everything. But I remember, I remember sitting there with uh, Randleman before, and like he was getting ready. He already signed, I think, or committed to High State. We're laying in a group, and like a circle where everybody's just talking, and and that dude would take guys out and blast double them out of bounds and help them up, you know. And right. I don't know. So I asked him, I said, "Why are you doing that, man? You're not don't help him up. Get back to the center." He's like. Oh, you just have us, man. No, I'm being nice out there. And I'm like, no, we don't do that. He goes, I said, we just shove them down and go back to the middle, you know? So it was kind of funny. And, uh, but here's the funny, here's the part I wanted you to hear. Um, I remember, I, was, I can't remember who I was wrestling in the finals, but I, I was on the bottom in the second period, baby, lining up and your mom, I can, I, I'll, I'll never forget this, man. She was up there yelling for us, you know, cheering and, and yelling for me. And, uh, because my mom wasn't there, that's who I could see. But she was cheering for us because of the brothers and everything. So, wow, yeah, that was oh Sandy, that was cool stuff. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Ship in the, in the up in the uh, upper deck area, the up Just, top. That's what my mom would do. They'd sit up by up up top, and but you could hear them, and you knew who what voice to listen for. But yeah, I, I that's that was my cool. sophomore that's year really in high cool. school. Man. Yep, sophomore year in high school. Yeah, Jared's parents are still in Sandusky. My parents are in Florida. They they wised up. Smart. So we were just down there for uh, the over the Christmas break, and we hung out in their retirement village. Uh, I don't know, windmill or something, windmill farm or windmill village. I don't know, but it was cool. It was a good time to see him. And my dad will periodically fly up to watch uh, Chad's sons wrestle. And then obviously, Wyatt is at App State, so he tries to get to stuff whenever he can. He gets up he, a he lot here, a lot though, right? He was at middle school national duels, and oh yeah, my dad goes to a lot of it. He goes yeah. to a lot of things and just tries to. 
see as many things as he can, and it's good. You know, he's 73, and he tries to uh, get to as much stuff. Hey, I heard – this is a crazy thing about I heard about your dad. I heard your dad used to want to give – he wanted the coaches to give kids – other kids money so he paid all your guys his way to ohio state is that true no no <laughs> <laughs> thank you no no he no somebody I mean, was like no old man to I mean, he, 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 he was a he was a supporter i mean he did things you know but we like, donated then yeah he donated some money he took care he was a big you know nowadays he he, he helped us out let's put it that way okay but, no i got a scholarship we got scholarships through school Okay, that was because someone told me like, yeah, the Sabados dad paid for them to go because he wanted everybody else to get scholarships. I was like, are you serious? No, back then. Pretty debunking. Mean, he had nine kids. He wasn't supporting everybody else's kids, man. <laughs> <Right>. Okay. <laughs> the other best thing I know that, that I know Emilio's doesn't run like this anymore, but my brother Bird said he used to go with your brother Adam mm -hmm. and Mike. Yep. And they would go to the register and take spending money out of it. Yeah. That <laughs> Yeah, and that's God's truth right there. Like <laughs> then my brother my brother they had, I think it was Craig Castler. I don't know if you remember a guy named Craig Castler. Yeah, Castler, man. He's awesome. Castler's hilarious. Yeah. He goes, Castler's like, I'd love to see the books on this place. <laughs> <laughs> no, he would go and like he knew we'd tell him and say, you know, or better yet, what would happen? It wasn't necessarily just we'd take cash out. It would be we'd take it, we'd get a gas receipt and throw it in there. You know, there so, you go. There you know, go. It was stuff we we spent it on, but we, I, uh, know. I know. But no, Castle by drinking I, beers I, for free. They're drinking beer. You know they're not paying for their beers. You know that. Hey, we did everything by the books, man. That's you know, <laughs> even even the high state, right? I think the statute of limitations are running are going to run out on looking at at the books. At Amelia's, I don't think that they're going to go back and check you guys on that. I'm just going to put. Uh, he, Dad was. They were big supporters, you know, and, and the guys yeah. randomly. They'd all come. They'd want to, you know. We we're if you were our family, you were his family. You know, I mean, if they were teammates with us, he treated we treated them all. That's how we still try to do that. Like, if you're in tight with us and you like my kid, you're you're part of our family. You need to have guys over Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, whoever, whatever we needed to do. If they if someone was stuck by themselves, I learned that from my parents. You know, they that was one thing they always did. They always took. Especially, you know, we're in Columbus, so you have guys from out of town, out of state, whatever. You don't have somewhere to go. You're out without your family. You're coming here. You're we're your family. That kind of stuff. So, you know, he, he, they're rowdy and you know rambunctious and everything. But man, he had a big heart. Both of them. My Old man had a big heart. I will say that he was a nice guy. He'd give you a little, little bit of a ribbon every now and again, just kind of, hey, what are you doing, you big stupid hillbilly? That's what I remember. Oh, he loved to call my family. And all those boys. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, you guys won three state titles at Reedy, right? Three team titles, right? Two. 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 Tell me, one was you were in high school, the other one you were in middle school, right? Uh, well. 87. Probably, probably in, I, I was probably in like fourth or fifth grade then. Fourth or fifth grade. Tell me your recollection of the parties after both of those titles. Well, the, the, well, it was every year was a party. It wasn't just yeah. after we won the team titles. Like every time we won a title it was great. Um, some of them were in Emilio's, you know, a lot of times we'd go back to Emilio's and do with customers and just celebrate as a family. And then when we won it in Cincinnati, we did go back to my house cause it was late. Um, but it was an all night. It was a, it was a fun night. You know, everybody, it's like everybody from Reedy came, you know, it was like just that kind of stuff. So um, something out of a movie. There that 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 many, it was like Project X at your house, but your parents yeah. threw the party. Yeah, so I you know that. it was it was they just loved to celebrate. They were proud and they wanted you know a lot of hard work. And it's like let's it's it's, it's celebration now. But then we'd have to get up in the morning and go deliver papers. You know because <laughs> they made us still do our like not me when I wrestled, but when my brothers were still when they were wrestling and I I was I had a paper route, so we had to get up and everybody. I love those weekends because. All the people that were over there celebrating would wake up and help me deliver a state. They weren't, they never went to bed, but they'd help me deliver paper in the morning, you know. <laughs> they just kept the meter running. I love yeah, it. Let's go. They would drive the, the meter running. When you keep the meter running, it is like time travel. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like if I try to keep the meter running now as a 42 year old man, yeah. it is literally like time travel. Cause I remember doing it in college at a couple times, right? Like just stay out all night, hang out. And I, I just, there's just no way now. No way. Not a no thing way. now. 
Nope, no way. Not a thing. I don't know about you. What are you, 47? I'm turning 49 next in a couple weeks. 48 right now. Are you, you, can you keep the meter running all night anymore? No. It's just not a thing. No. Nope. Jared, 40? Can you keep uh, the meter nope. running? No, heck no, man. No hey, way. man, I tried. My son, like I said, Angela got married, and, and I went. we went to their bachelor party in Miami, and uh, what a different world, right? So yeah. they, they at, at one night about 3 o'clock, I said, boys, I'm gone, you know? The Tap third, out. Yeah, and then I said I tried, I tried, but I'm going, to, I'm going, I'm going to bed, man. So that was that was a, that was my meter. That, the meter <laughs> was like gone. The meter was shut off. <laughs> so we and are like, at a, at about an hour. Anything else? Hey, yeah, hey, just one thing. Um, getting back to those girls for a minute. So I don't know what what's going on, but you know we have districts this year. So that that was a big. Last year we started districts, and I think that's a big growth that helped out with us with the with the Ohio high school as well. Um, Will you tell us like what the locations are to your yeah. knowledge and when it is? And, and so it's February 13th. It's a Sunday and there's four locations. So we go to Marysville, Olentangy, Orange, um, God, Harrison, and um, God, why do I always forget? Is it Luther West? Luther West. Thank you. I always, I know I always get the coach's name mixed up with the school, but yeah, yeah Dave Wessler at, at Luther West. So. I think that was a huge impact for us, um, you know, with Ohio high school, because, you know, that first year it almost felt like, Hey, you just had an open term at the end of the year. No big deal. Right. But then we organized and had part of what we had to because of growth. So you put four districts in there. Now they can see the format. Now they see the growth and everything and, and, um, and how they can envision it happening for them. So that was a big step for us. And, um, you know, and then it made the, it makes the state tournament that much more special because now these girls, you had to earn it to get there. It's not like now you're a state qualifier. You're not just, you just didn't sign up. Now you had to qualify for the state. And that, I, that's a, I an accomplishment in itself. You right. know, and, that, and then they can go back to their club and celebrate. And, so I think we've done it trying to follow Ohio high school rules. We do everything that they do, you know, transfer rules, eligibility rules. We try to stay right with them. And I think that's made it good for a high school but it's also made it special for the girls you know they're you have to earn it you know you, you you're not just getting in the tournament you're not wrestling the state tournament because you pay 30 bucks you know you gotta you gotta earn it now so, so I like that. there's I like still that. a lot to, to unpack with that but so is the goal to wrestle alongside the boys or is it something where all right it's going to be its own separate tournament what's the discussion right now obviously it can change but what what is wanted by the girls community i don't it's it's not necessarily they're right by them I don't, I don't think at first, I think that was kind of what they were thinking. Like, let's, let's go wrestle. And, and we want to be at this shot with the boys. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they've kind of evolved and realized that, you know, that, that, that might be too much logistical issues. And um, from what I gathered today, the statement, excuse me, it said that how high school said they're going to kind of keep this, the schedule the same. If you guys read that, it said it will be in February still. So um, I think, and you know what, the season's too long anyway. So I think they'll be happy with February and, and go from there and then they can, if those girls are in another sport or something, they can go right into it. And um, it's too long anyway. So right. If our season wasn't so long, we would have got the COVID year in. We would have had that state yeah. tournament. Oh, look at all the other to think about it. It was hey, a week girls, too long. The girls got it in. We, we how about that? We had state champion girls that year, but not boys. One of two states. Yeah. <laughs> what was the other one? California? I don't even know. Does it matter? Yeah, it <laughs> makes like, sense. We were one of them. That's how yeah. We're but I think so late. You're right, Dom. Too, it's too long. Way too long. Um, but they're I, I think they're they're so static right now. There's gonna be some talk, but I, I don't I anticipate maybe they you know, eventually maybe there's been talk of maybe having it at the Cavelli Center, you know, having a, a tournament there if that could work. Um, I know Tom Ryan was talking to a few guys on our at the coaches clinic about that from our from our, our board that He'd like to see that maybe, especially if then let's get them girls, you know, let's get Ohio state to have a team, you know, that kind of stuff. I so, mean, I was got one, you know, he yeah. state's going to add one. If I was got one, I mean, what you obviously well, you know, know how it is. Man. The, you, you, if, if someone, if Iowa has it, then Penn state has a high state better get it. And yep. if Iowa has a Penn state better, you know, all those. Yep. So you got to keep up with the Joneses in this league, man. Arms race. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. Arms race. Yeah. That's, that's totally yeah. it, man. Awesome. Thank you for the locations, man. Thank you for coming on the, the Barbarian Hour. Go check out some specials at www.barbarianapparel.com. Dom DeSavito. Dom, you got anything else for us? State tournaments February 19th and 20th at Hillary Davidson. Okay. So at the school where you teach? Yep. 
Very fitting. Okay. Same place we've been the last two years. So those are the dates we're looking. And, and right now, notice I have to say right now, but we, we're, we're going to have a full boat. You know, we'll have full stands, full everything. Um, girls will be wrestling. Every fan can come, whoever wants to come. So right now. And the atmosphere right now. Has, is going to be different too. I mean, right. Knowing that it's going to be sanctioned next year. I mean, the energy, oh. it was already we, full energy. But some good things planned out for these girls that you're going to, I don't want to leak everything, but we got some, we got some nice things planned and uh, let's just say there might be a tunnel this year. So I love it. I and love then, it. Thanks for the leak. Thanks for the leak. We got to say you're not going to leak and then leaking. Well, that's just one little thing. We don't know what's okay. in that tunnel, but there's a tunnel. Okay. And then uh, Matt Stout, we just confirmed yesterday. He, I think he's going to be our announcer for the whole weekend instead of just like nice. periodically awesome. stuff. So, so I'm gonna say it on here. So now he has to do it. Right? Stout, you better show up or I'll come to our early tonight. We'll fight. Oh, that man loves it. He's the best, isn't he? He's, he does. He's, he's got energy. energy. He's yeah, got. Dude. I like that. So I like that guy. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Definitely. Well, dude, thank Guys, you for coming on. I appreciate time, you, Dom. Man. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. Thanks, Dom. You guys have a good one. You do a great job, man.